Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It's fabulous to have you here today on part four of making Gendry's Warhammer from Game of Thrones. I can't wait to try a lot of new things, learn a lot, and bring you guys along for the journey. Enjoy. So first things first, of course, this is the little cap that's going to be going on top of the uh, the eye of the war handle, and we need to thread this so that I can then make myself a, uh, a little socket that'll go into the wood in the handle, and then we'll screw that down. I figured we might as well grip it in the lathe. That'll be nice and handy. I'm not going to grip too hard. Otherwise, I might damage the surface finish. Boom, there we go. That's all we need. And we'll come over here. We'll take ourselves a die stock and an M8. Eight millimeter die. That'll slip right in there. There we go. That's all set up. And now we go. And I'm going to get it started. Switch this into a low gear. This way, this won't turn. Give her a little bit of the tap paste. Carry her on. Make sure she's nice and square and uh, keep threading it. There we go. Lovely. And we'll keep spinning her around up until we can't anymore. So I'm always interested to try new finishing techniques. So this this may or may not work. I'm, I want to try cold bluing a scale surface. I want to see how that looks. I'm perfectly willing to accept that it might just be a terrible failure. But of course, you know, that just makes me want to try it more. So The directions on here don't call for doing it one-to-one, -one, but I saw a video of this old Tony using this stuff, and uh, he used it one-to-one -one with better results. While my science experiment gets underway, let's talk a little bit about the design of this piece. Well, while I was starting out, I had this as the only, uh, only information, the only photo of what this thing looked like. And then last night, I saw this. Yeah, it's a big difference. It's a big difference in clarity. And what I see now is there is an elk, I believe, on the side of it. Ooh, so I need to work out how I'm going to make two elks. Now, that first image was clear enough for me to see that there was something that didn't look like steel, but something vine-like on there. So I had planned ahead, and I bought myself some copper in anticipation of needing to forge some. And, you know, I was all set and ready to, you know, just split some stuff and make some vine-like looking things. And now I need to make an elk and antlers on the elk, and I have no clue how to do that. I mean, I have no clue how to do really anything of any of the stuff that I do. We make it up as we go. But here, I really have no clue how to do it. So I just took this out of there and I rinsed it off in the water with gloves on. How cool does that look? It is, it is all the way black. That looks so, so cool. I was really worried as to how this would look because it's scale. Obviously, it's not going to react the same way a true metal will react with the cold blue, as cold blue is designed to work with true metal. On second thoughts here, it's blackened it, but not necessarily so much. What you see here is straight out of the forge with a wire brush finish at the forge. Here you see a wire cut brush finish, and here you see a wire cut brush finish that's then been in the cold blue. I'm not exactly sure if it's worth it. Okay, so at this point, I kind of decided enough drawing. I might as well light the forge and give it a go, because I'm not the best drawer in the world, neither am I the best blacksmith in the world. But uh, I think I'd probably end up doing a little better with a hand hammer than I would with uh, with a the marker there on the board. So we'll, we'll at least light the forge and give it a go in some steel before we move on to some copper. And it's basically, I'm just trying to get the rough idea of the shape that we're going to go with for the actual head. I think we'll be able to do the, the antlers relatively easily. We'll see. In other news, I oiled this because, of course, something I forgot is that gunmetal finish isn't a finish until you oil it. I believe the whole idea is that it's making pores into the metal that you can then fill with oil, and it's the oil that gives it the corrosion resistance. And I have to say that that color there, that black, is just beautiful. I'm really excited with this finishing method because I took this, which was just normal steel, you know, normal, normal shiny steel. This is a lathe tool, it's a dead center. And I put that in there, and I then gave it the steel wool, and oh my goodness, that is such a beautiful finish. I'm really excited to be playing with this in the future. So, let's give her a go, let's see how it looks. <laughs>
which I have made an elk-like object, and I dare say it came out a lot better than I thought it would. Let's go ahead and break this off. I'm gonna take a pair of scrolling tongs, and holy moly, that is cool. Oh yes, I'm very pleased with that. I am frankly shocked that I made that first time. Holy guacamole, that is cool. I am thrilled, very excited, and I cannot wait to try this in copper. So here we go, we got a steel elk and we have some copper. I have this piece of 16 millimeter copper, which I'm planning to make the other two out of. Forging copper is absolutely lovely. It's one of my favorite materials to forge. It forges very easily, it's very soft. You don't have to heat it up to, uh, to a yellow, of course, otherwise you make a puddle in the forge. You heat it up to about a red temperature and you can work a very long time. It keeps its heat very, very nicely. So it's a good, good, good material to forge. Should be really easy to work, easy to play with, and uh, we shouldn't really have any issues unless I'm careless and I leave it in the forge and it melts. But you'll notice I have the forge turned way down low. That's why it's making this weird noise. I've got my, uh, my venturis shut up, so there's very little oxygen coming into the fire. That's gonna keep the temperature down. Again, if I go too hot, we can melt it. So if I keep the forge cool, we hopefully won't melt it. Now, one thing about copper is that it conducts heat rather incredibly which is a problem. Now the reason it's a problem for us is that it means that it, you cannot hold onto the bar like you would with steel. Steel bar, you know, you hold on to one end and you work on the other. Here you can't because you heat up one end and all of it is gonna get hot. So we are going to cut a piece off. I'm actually gonna cut off a little more than that. We've cut a piece off and we're gonna hold said piece of steel in a pair of tongs. I'll put a tong clip on the end of the reins. We'll file off the sharp edge and into the fire we go, but not for long though because we don't want to melt it and it could easily get melted. Okay, so here we go. It's about a dull red temperature. We'll take about an inch and a half of material, lay it over the near edge and, uh, and start working it down. We'll flatten her off. Work on the near edge of the anvil with the flat side of the hammer half on, half off. Lovely, 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 jubbly. So 45 degrees to the first one. I'm now gonna forge a reverse, whoa, a reverse taper on the near side of the anvil here. This is gonna create a nice isolation point, keep it all strong while I work it. And it's gonna mean that we get the taper that we need for the snout, so it's lovely. Yes, this is in fact still tea water. What I'm now doing is I just heated this up to a red temperature, then we cooled it off in tea. That means that the copper is now annealed, nice and soft, and it can be worked at a lower temperature without me having to get it hot, um, which means that I can touch it. I can clamp it down here, I can work for a while, because right now what needs to be done is I need to do a lot of chiseling here. Form the an anchors, antlers, how we want them. Okay, we're going in for another anneal. As you work copper, what'll happen is it'll work harden, and so it'll end up getting brittle and you risk cracking it. It has now been annealed and we're ready to get back to work doing some more chiseling. So I've got the antlers spread out how I want. I'm now going to pull the ears down 
to their final shape with this far and fuller. So a couple more hits and those ears should be out just, just how we want. And I didn't bring them out the whole way because I was quite worried that with all the work that we had to do up here to the antlers, I might, I might damage the ears if we had done it first. Okay, so here is the collar, and here is the elk. And now what we've got to do is we've got to work out where this elk is going to mount on the collar, and we've got to form the rest of these antlers to work around it. Now, I've just annealed this, of course, so I should be able to do the bulk of that cold. However, as soon as you bend just a little bit, it gets a little harder, it work hardens. So I'm going to have to be very careful that I don't break anything off. It's weak now as it is already because it's chiseled and you know, it's difficult to keep that as clean as possible. So I need to be very careful as I do this, but I'm going to get the rough form, bend this stuff around, start making this look really, really nice. Just look how awesome this thing is going to look once that's mounted on there. Oh yes, now I just need to make a second. That has taken its time, it is now annealed, so it is gonna be ready to bend around the mandrel and get the shape that's gonna make this fit wonderfully on there. I'm so excited. I haven't forged copper in a really long time, and this was a massive amount of fun. It's a lovely material to work. I still got plenty more copper, so expect some, uh, expect some cool projects with more copper in the future. If you're new to the channel, please do hit subscribe. You're gonna be very grateful you did because we're making amazing videos like this, making things, being creative, having fun, enjoying ourselves. Five, six, seven times a week and I'd love to bring you along the journey. Please do hit like, drop us a comment below, love hearing from you. And of course there are two videos right there. That is the link to part one, that is the link to part th three? 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 Yeah, part three. And here you can hit subscribe. Have a great day, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.